you. Okay, well, you know, if you want a hard-hitting interview about uh, why did you take steroids and all that garbage, go to somebody else. This is me. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've known this kid since he was 18. So uh, we sat down today for about 12, 15 minutes, and just things that I wanted to ask him. So get it. I am Susan Waldman along with Alex Rodriguez. You know, I'm thinking about this whole week and your whole career, and you almost remind me of a Shakespearean hero. I mean, there's always one thing that happens, and everything in his whole life is all predicated on that. No matter what they do to try and fix it, something always, always happens. They're very successful. They're always powerful people. They're always very talented. But one thing kind of just stays with you. No matter what you do, you can't get away from it. But I want to take you back because I've always wanted to ask you something. When did you first know that you had this kind of baseball talent, and how, how old were you? And when did you know, and when did you start getting treated like something that was special? Oh, wow, that's that's a great question, Susan. First of all, um, I've always loved baseball. Ever since uh, I was in Pampers, I remember knocking lamps in my house. and, uh, and You were in Pampers? Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and being a menace around the house with the, with the baseball bat. Um, I think the first time, I was a late bloomer, and I always hit, uh, when I was really young, eighth and ninth in the lineup, and I played second base because I couldn't reach from shortstop because I played with kids that were older, and of course, when you're 11 and 12, a couple of years is, is a lot. And uh, when I was 15 years old, going on 16, uh, I had the honor to represent the United States in the U.S. Olympic teams. That's where I was uh, roommates with uh, A.J. Hinch and Tori Hunter, who are great friends and also had wonderful careers. And it was at that time in Monterey, Mexico, that a gentleman tapped me on the shoulder in the lobby and he said, um, hi, my name is Scott Boris, and I think you have a really bright future. And ever since then, I, I felt an enormous amount of pressure um, to produce and also to um, live up to my potential. And uh, that was a long time ago. You know, you told me once that you always batted down in the lineup and you were just always afraid you weren't good enough because you played with older older people and older kids does that stay with you when you get to be i mean because you you became alex rodriguez very very quickly and when dave um Niehaus gave you the thing of a rod you were just a kid you know you say a late bloomer what were you 20 um that's not a late bloomer but does that little kid who was never good enough to make the throw from shortstop does that stay with you no matter how successful you get I think so, and that, that's uh, sometimes both good and bad, Susan. I think um, the drive to uh, always want to be better, the drive and the passion of the game that you absolutely want to break down the game to the smallest molecule every single day, um, that part of it is great. The other part of it is there's a time where you have to kind of let go and uh, and let the river flow, like Joe, Joe Torre was saying. So, so you actually were great, but you never really believed it. Is that the... Uh, I, I don't know if I believed it, but I just felt like I always wanted to do more. And uh, in some cases, it really helped, and in some cases, it really hurt. When you got to Texas, you know, I've always wanted to clear something up. Did you and Junior, was there a problem that they were going um, to sign one or the other of you? Is that what happened there? Because I remember, I'm trying to think back what really happened, because all of a sudden he was gone and then you were gone. Was there anything um, adversarial about with you and Junior? No, I mean, absolutely nothing, Susan. I mean, first of all, uh, when I got to the big leagues in 1994, I was 18 years old, he was 24, and he was already like Mike Trout times 10. He was like the greatest player in the world. And in many ways, he was our Michael Jordan with a Nike campaign, and he was just an incredible ambassador of the game of baseball. Um, he was uh, like a big brother to me, and there was never any, from my point of view, any competition because he was so much greater than everybody else on the field. Um, we were both signed uh, for long-term contracts, and it wasn't until Pat Gillick came in with his team that made the trade to Mike Cameron uh, for Cincinnati. So that had nothing to do with me. You know, it's always interesting because there's so much to clear up and we don't have all that time. The other thing is Texas. Um, we hear all these stories, the 24 and 1, all the stuff in Texas. But the only person that I really loved in Texas is a guy named Michael Young who, who actually tweeted. And he's always said, no, 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 he was like my older brother and he helped me with everything. And I wouldn't be in this game if it weren't for Alex. So we're trying to put this together, what we hear about you and what's in the papers, and a guy who might be the 
most wonderful guy you've ever met, Michael Young, saying I would have been in baseball for two years if it wasn't for Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, first of all, I mean, what happened in Texas was just Math 101, right? Uh, Tom Hicks um, decided to go in a different way. I thought he uh, he had his issues, and he approached me about a trade. But, I mean, for the, first, the three years that I was in Texas uh, were, were years that I played well. Um, but just the math didn't work out. And in the process, I met some great people. Um, Michael Young was one of um, a guy like, like a Robinson Cano who, um, who I took under my wing. And I got to tell you, he... Um, he, he exceeded everyone's expectations and became, had a wonderful career. Yeah, he, he really did. And um, Robbie Cano, you mentioned that you get to the Yankees. And all over the league, before we get to the other stuff, all over the league, there are people that say, well, you know, Alex told me. And Alex did this. And Alex bought me a suit. And Alex did that. This is not the person that we know at all. You know, that's the greatest things about baseball is, you know, you, you, you're a student and then you're a teacher and you have an opportunity to pay it forward. Uh, Brett Gardner is swinging the bat as well as I've seen him in his career. And uh, after the game, he says yesterday, what do you have for me? And I said, do me a favor, you and Jessica go back tonight and write down in your journal exactly how you're feeling. And there's going to come a time where you're struggling that you both can go back to those notes and hopefully that gets you back on track. When you look at, um, you talk about mistakes that you've made and you can't go back and you can't undo them and I always thought about you that if you you got advice from an awful lot of people on the way some of it good some of it bad but I always thought that maybe you knew in your heart what you needed to do but you were talked into things by other people not talked into them but you listened to people that maybe you shouldn't have and I see that now because those people are gone and it's just you well, two things. Uh, you gave me some great advice when I came back from my suspension, and you said to me, Alex, I want to see that young man that was full of life with a great smile that I met when you were 18, 19 years old. And I've done everything in my power to try to be that kid again, and, and I'm happy with the way things have turned out, especially the last two years. Um, I think overall, Susan, you're right. I did take a lot of advice, but I put the team together, and uh, they gave me advice, but I took it, and I quarterbacked the whole thing. So that is on me, and I have to shoulder all the responsibility responsibility um, and then I just basically try to learn from my, from my mistakes and here I am today do you ever look back and say I mean you can't undo anything but if you always if do you ever look back and not regret but say you know if I had just done that or just done that maybe this wouldn't happen or if you are you past that you know I, I am uh, I've always I'm upset about the mistakes and uh, disappointed but I'm even more disappointed that I acted like an ass for for uh, you know I doubled down and it was that whole process was painful but in, in in the next how we say it in the back nine of my career uh, I, I hope to be able to pay it forward and let youngsters know about my mistakes and hopefully they can uh, avoid some of those okay I want to talk about what's going on now um, Jean Afterman who's the assistant general manager and I'm bringing it up because she's the one who brought this suggestion to Hal that you work and she's not gonna get a lot of credit for this but she should but it's fascinating to me that Hal is doing with you what his dad did with Reggie I mean and Hal doesn't like to be compared to his dad but it's pretty the same pretty much the same George wanted to make sure that Reggie would always be around and not be subject to whoever was general manager whoever was president he answered just to George and that's it and you are answering just to Hal and that sets it up so that with everything that's gone on you have as soft a landing as you possibly can when you are done after Friday uh, definitely I first want to address the Gene because I have a lot of respect for Gene Gene has been incredibly fair with me over the years and she's an amazing asset to the Yankee organization and I have two daughters and I believe in, in women's rights and I gotta tell you I hope we have more more women like Jeannie, like Jean and yourself uh, involved in baseball, especially at the executive level, because we need more women in our game. As far as how, um, that's the silver lining for me. No matter what happens this week, um, the fact that he had enough faith in me to offer me this opportunity to uh, not only be somewhat of an advisor to him, but more importantly, uh, try to nurture our young players. I talk about that this is between Tampa and the Bronx. It's not just a two and a half hour flight. There's so much that goes on and we need a curriculum for these kids. And some of these players are $100 million assets or $150 million assets for our organization. So we have to invest in them so we can get a good ROI. 
We'll go to Friday. I know what's going on in, in Boston. They're yelling. They're chanting your name. Is this a, they want so terribly for you to get out. They wanted you so terribly to get out so that they could boo you. Just one last time. I hear it in the stands when I'm standing down there. Um, that'll, that'll happen on Friday. What's it going to be like for you? Your mom, your daughters, um, everybody that's coming. What's, that's going to be, what's that going to be like? Yeah, first of all, the fans in Boston have been awesome. I mean, what happened last night, it's something that I'll definitely never forget. And uh, they're just great fans and very passionate, just like our fans. Um, I think Friday is going to be a very emotional day. Um, you know, to have uh, one last dance uh, with the greatest fans in the world. They've been so good to me. Gave me an opportunity. I'll never forget. I, I was so... Uh, nervous when I got reintroduced after my suspension and when I was sitting seventh and they announced me I said boy this can go anyway and uh, they were great and they gave me a lot of strength a lot of uh, positive energy and I went on to have a very good year but I'm really gonna enjoy it especially because my mother's there and my daughters and the fans okay is this it you're gonna pick up you might be, you haven't looked past Friday I don't know I wouldn't be surprised if in two weeks you're someplace else in a different uniform finish up the year I don't know if you are or you're not. Um, do you just want this chapter, though, closed and then you'll think about it? I'm sure people have called because people called me, so I, I know that you're you're getting called. What are your, your thoughts? Are you just concentrating on Friday? Yeah, Susan, you know, it's, it's so much has happened here in New York. It's It's been such a blessing to wear this uniform, to play in the grandest stage in front of the greatest fans. And I gotta tell you, I, I, I'm focusing on, uh, on Friday, and I'm focusing to share this with my family and my fans. And I really can't think too much beyond that. You gonna cry again? I hope not. I hope not. That was embarrassing. And my daughters um, keep making fun of me, so no more crying. Alex, as always, thank you very much. Thank you, Susan.